Hello, good morning. We're live on the Trade Decorator Festival. It's day one and we've got a fantastic show for you this morning. I'm going to be joined live by Michael Nichols from Osmo for a live Q&A where you'll get to speak to Michael and put your questions to him about all the Osmo products. Now before that, we have got a um, quick demonstration of the Osmo products for you to take a look at. Um, for those of you that are new to Crowdcast, please feel free to comment in the comments box down the right hand side. Um, please don't ask any questions in this part of the session as we will need to go to a new session for the Q&A and we'll, I don't want to miss anybody's questions. Um, so I'm going to show you the demonstration first, then I'll come back on the screen and I'll be instructing you to press the green Q&A button so that we can go through and talk with Michael live. So if you could all stay in this session for the time being because I wouldn't like you to miss anything and I'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you. Hello, my name is Michael and I'm a regional sales manager for Osmo UK. Today in this video, my plan is to show you application. Um, after all, application is really key to achieving best end results with our products. So without further ado, Let's get started. So to start with, what I want to try and achieve is give you an idea of how far our product actually goes. To do this, I'm going to use one of our sample sachets, um, which I'll pour out onto one of my sample boards, which we use for training. Um, and for those of you who are watching this that are part of our supply network, we do actually have um, a display sample board. Um, which you can get from us. Um, give us a call, uh, tell us where you are and we'll send one to you. First of all, with the sachets, the important factor is we need you to move the product around. The purpose of this is to bind all the ingredients. I have done this prior to this video, so generally we sort of say about anywhere between 30 to 60 seconds, um, should be more than enough. If you're using one of our more intensive options, perhaps a little bit longer. But as I've already done this, we're just gonna go straight ahead and use it. So, move the product away from the lip, which you're gonna tear, and pour. So I'm gonna put all of this product onto the timber. My aim here, is to show you how far our products go. So I'm going to take some of what's on here and use that. So remember, this is a five mil sachet. So arguably I've used half of that to cover one board. So that the remainder. So the other thing that we can learn from this is actually what our clear products achieve visually. The clear products penetrate the timber, bring all those natural rich colours to the surface. Something else I want to show you is what's inside this tin. Um, and this relates to product application because this product has been in my garage now for some time and obviously it's quite cold temperatures outside at the moment. So what's in here is quite thick and gloopy. So I just want to show you and run through how you warm up the product um, and get it to the consistency that we like so that you are able to achieve the coverage rate that we offer with our product. See how thick this product can be. Yeah, you getting that? Mm -hmm. So, what's really important actually, you'll see that my Osmo Stirrer has square edges. So, if we quickly stir that up, you might already be seeing this. But we have already reduced that consistency.
And the reason I point out that this is a square edge there is because there's no point if you're on site and, for example, um, and you pick up your screwdriver, you're just going to move that screwdriver through the product. You need to use a square edge stirrer to mix it in thoroughly. And that product you know, is now good to go. It didn't take a lot of effort, but we've got it there. Next, I'm going to show you some of our white options for the interior. I've got some floor samples that I'm going to apply it to. Um, the idea with this is that we're going to uh, show you the options that we have to achieve the white finish that you or your customer is looking for. Okay, so the images that you just saw from your left to right are Pollux Clear, Pollux Raw, the Pollux White. Then we're moving up the pigmentation to our wood wax finish white, and finally our wood wax finish intensive white. The idea with our whites is that we're offering you a choice. A choice that is open to your personal interpretation of your whitewash finish, for example. Remember, these are two coat applications. The wood wax finish is a single coat application if you're using it on the floor. Top coat is with one of our white polyx options. Um, all in all, you are using two coats of a white finish. So moving swiftly on, I'm now going to show you some of our decking products. Um, I've been lucky enough to get some lovely Tim samples. First of which is going to be Ippy, um, followed by some yellow glam, um, of which I'm sure you are going to appreciate when you see our product actually being applied to these. So the first product I'm going to use is the 007 Clear Decking Oil. Um, I'm using this because actually I want to really show you how it can highlight and define the timber that it's being applied to. And following that, I'm going to use our 006 Banker Eye Light. I'm also going to be using our lovely deck and roller set. So hopefully you saw how easy and how thinly I spread that product, um, both those products. And I think that's one thing I'm, I'm trying to get across to you and one thing I want you to take from this. Our products have to be applied thinly and spread well. That is how you are going to achieve your ultimate finish with Osmo. So once again, we've got 006 on my right, your left, which is the light bank right. And on my left, your right, we have the 007 clear decking oil. Both of which, I'm sure you agree, really do the wood justice. So next I want to show you our hand pad applicator with fleece pad. 
Um, this is a pad that I've previously used. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get a unused one quickly. Um, so we're going to use it again. I'm sure it'll be more than adequate enough to the job. But this this application does excite me. I think it really does allow us to apply our products in a in a whole new way. So with the hand pad system, my plan is to use our oil stain. I'm going to use it on a piece of kitchen worktop. Um, and as I say, I'm really hoping it's going to highlight to you again what can be achieved with our products. So the hand pad sticks to the application pad nice and easy. Okay, so you don't need a lot of the product. In fact, that's probably far too much, but let's see how we get on. So perhaps there's a bit of a subtle colour that I chose. And the reason I chose it is because this is a piece of my worktop which I have already treated with this colour um, and I'm going to be using this. But hopefully you can see how the product itself has been pushed into the grain, giving the silver grey, which this product is, it's giving the silver grey tone to the grain itself. This product will require one of our hard wax oils, the clear options over the top to offer any form of durability. Now I want to show you some of our products um, on timbers that are being widely used now externally and they are cedar, western red cedar and larch. So to start with I'm going to use our UV protection oil 428 on red cedar. Something taught to me by a very good decorator friend of mine, laying off. So just bring out any of those brush marks that you can see. Not many to be fair. So that's the 48. So next I'm going to show you the 78, which is a red cedar from our natural oil wood stain range. As you can probably see, it is a lot thinner. The coverage rate is about Eight meters square further for this product, so even less product required. So, two color cedar options from within our external product ranges. And finally, what I'm gonna show you on this cedar range here is our clear product, our 420 clear, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. So I think as I mentioned before, um, Colours is quite subjective to an individual. So we've got the clear, 428 and 728 cedar. So remember from a pigmented product you get more UV protection. Now hopefully you can once again see the overall product that I used and the, in the, in the manner in which I used it. It wasn't a lot and I made it spread across the timber itself. So I made it travel and, and go the distance. It's always challenging when we're working in on small pieces of timber. If you've got a, a big, big area, um, that product is, tends to be spread a lot further and a lot, a lot easier. But ultimately, I hope that I'm you know, giving you a good impression of how you can achieve the best finishes.
So these are two larch options. Larch option from the UV protection oil range, which I think has actually kept the product looking quite natural on the surface there, much like an unfinished piece of timber. The larch option from our natural wood stain range. Remember, pigment is your friend, <laughs> and I think that's lost a lot um, when it comes to finishes. Pigment offers you much more in the way of UV protection. So these are both large options from our range, and it's nice to have choice. And finally, on the top here, this is a grey product from the natural oil wood stain range as well. 903 Basalt Grey. I thought I'd chuck it in there um, as an option for you to see. Um, and I think you'd agree, it's actually rather nice. And finally, I'd like to share with you some of our more intensive colour options. Um, these ones I'm going to show you are external products. We do have internal options as well. I hope you like what you get to see. That's it, that's everything. Thank you, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you wanna find out more, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn. I'm sure there's another one, can't think of it right now. Obviously, you've also got our website, which is www.osmouk.com. Thank you. Hello, welcome back. As you can see, there's a brilliant range of products there from Osmo for all different applications. And we're gonna be going live now with Michael in our live Q&A. Hello everybody, welcome back. Um, thank you for joining us for the q and I'm now live with Michael from Osmo. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. Um, now in this session, we are gonna be launching a competition to win a Bosch power box um, 18 volt water resistant cordless Bluetooth job site radio with Osmo that's worth 199.99 um, and I will come to that at the end of the session um, but before that if I show you around the platform for those of you that haven't joined us on Crowdcast for Q&A before um, feel free to comment as before in the comments box but beneath the screen I see some of you have found it already there's an ask a question um, tab and if you type your questions in there I can make sure that we come to all of your questions and um, get Michael to answer those for you um, so good morning guys good morning guy good morning Mark um, and um, good morning to everybody else joining us in the session. Um, Michael, I've got a question from Brian Dennett, and he's asking how long should Osmo last on exterior floorboards? They're not decking boards, but some sort of cedar. How long should it last on exterior floorboards? Yes. Um, that's, that's, that's a quite open question, if I'm being honest with you. Um, exterior wood treatment, especially when you're talking about horizontal elevations that are open up to all the weathering potential. Um, it's really difficult to give an exact uh, sort of time before you're get, going to get any degradation. Um, it would, yeah, there, there's many exterior external factors as well that you have to kind of um, contemplate uh, where in relation to the sun is, is this area. Um, what timber are you using as well is, is really important. Um, yeah, it's not something I can give you an exact answer on it, if I'm being brutally honest. And I'm, I'm sorry that's the, the situation, but um, I'd like to know more, and I'm sure I can give you a better uh, answer. But um, if that's something we can get the gentleman's details and I can get back to him on, then I'm more than happy to. Um, yeah, I'm, unfortunately, I can't give you any more than that at this stage. Okay, um, it, that, 
Brian, if you can um, drop us your details and Michael will come back to you and find out more about the um, situation and, and give you some proper advice. Thank you. Um, I've got another question here from Russell and he's saying, what product were you using with the hand pad on the worktop? Okay, yeah, that was our oil stain. Um, we kind of label that up as more of a professional product. Um, historically, it is for flooring um, and it's a mechanically applied product. Uh, the reason I used it with the hand pad is because um, it gives us a new option with the hand pad applicator in the ability to work in smaller areas and, and evolve, I guess, into work tops, pieces of furniture and things like that. Um, but as a rule, it is a professional product for flooring, um, which is mechanically applied. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, I've got another question from Mark and Mark's saying, hi, I use your top oil for work tops. Is there a product that you could top coat this with to give it more durability? No, unfortunately not. I mean, um, so it is our hard wax oil or one of our hard wax oils, the, the, the work top oil. Um, so it is a two coat system, um, two coats of which should be more than adequate for the likes of a worktop um what you want to try and avoid is actually putting more product on um if you over apply the product what you can end up with is with the surface coating which is something that as in in general osmo doesn't really offer it is a product that penetrates the surface and does all the protection from within the timber um so two coats should be enough um again i'd like to know what the situation is and why you need more protection um going back to what we discussed with the last gentleman um i'm happy to try and help you but i'd need to know a bit more information about what 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 the specifics are if possible please um mark do you want to come up on the screen and speak to michael about it it might help him um get an answer for you if you want to type in the comments box, I can actually bring you up on the screen. If not, um, if you can drop your details in the comments and um, Michael will get in touch with you after the session. Okay, I guess he doesn't want to come up on the screen. Um, okay, that's the same. It's no problem, Mark. He said he can't at the moment. If any of you have got any questions that you want to put to Michael and you'd actually like to come up and ask him in person, then I can bring you up on the screen because um, I can see that some of your questions might need a little more detail that um, we can't really identify just in the question the way it's written. Um, so I've got a question from Carly Phillips and she's saying, what would you recommend for a dining room table that's heavily used? um as i sort of i think i previously mentioned our our most durable products are our hard wax oils um for a dining room table as long as it's a a, a solid timber table um you could use either our flooring product the polyx or our worktop oil um the worktop product does have the food certification um so if it's if it's something that you're conscious about and and you're worried about um the food the top oil would be the one to go with, um, but either that or the products are our hard wax oils and are our most durable options. Okay, brilliant. Michael, why should somebody choose Osmo as opposed to other oils or varnishes? Okay, um, yeah, that's a good question actually. Um, well, something I get quite often is people referring to us as a similar product to sort of, as you said, the alternatives. Um, but we're not, in, in my in my opinion, we're not a similar product. We're an alternative product. Um, and as I previously mentioned, our product tends to penetrate the timber and protect the timber from within. Whereas something else I alluded to is a lot of the traditional finishes are surface coatings. Um, the problem with surface coatings, uh, as I see it, is they do have a tendency to, or have the poss possibility of cracking, peeling, or flaking, whether it be internal or external. Um, because we're a two coat system throughout our product range, um, at least 95% of our product range, um, on a product that penetrated timber, you shouldn't be experiencing cracking, peeling, or flaking. And arguably, if you are experiencing that, um, there will be an underlying reason as to why in general it tends to be over application going back to the video you know that's why 
I've tried to make a point of saying how thin our product has to be applied. Um, yeah. The other the other thing that we have, uh, I think, as an advantage in, in relation to the more historic oils and varnishes that perhaps are being used is we have an exceptionally high coverage rate. Um, the two products that we've talked about, Top Oil, Pollux, for example, they both have 24 meter square coverage per litre. Um, and I think, again, going back to, there's so many options when it comes to wood finishes. Um, I think at best you might be getting around 16, maybe 18 meters square per litre. So um, I would put that in the context of you getting more for your money out of Osmo through a two coat system. Um, I'm, 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 I am also aware of varnishes. There's a varnish um, from my merchant days that I used to sell a lot of, uh, which was a four coat system um, onto, uh, if you were using um, a color as well, there was a, it was a four coat system. So like I say, we, we're kind of cutting down the, 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 the application requirements. Um, yeah, I think that, does that answer your question? I think so. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> Owen um, is asking, can the product be used over a previously wax coated floor? Waxed. Um, the best advice I could give you is to, is to um, sample uh, so sample our product in, a, in an area where, um, where you, in, a, in, in a discrete area perhaps, uh, to see if you're going to get the adhesion. Um, it's, again, it's very, very difficult because um, there are specifics that that we need to kind of understand. But um, ultimately, you know, the, the, our product has to penetrate. So depending on the level of wax and, and um, other other properties, um, if you aren't getting that penetration, you're not going to get the product to adhere. Um, so I think sample sample apply would be the first thing I, did, I would suggest. And obviously, if, if you're not going to get that adhesion, then you are unfortunately going to need to remove the previous coating to a certain degree anyway um th th these are these are difficult questions because that you know again i can i can possibly help further but there's there's more information i would need um to to be able to be more precise um with with that okay no problem um if any of you want to get in touch with michael if you could drop your details in the comments and Michael can follow up with you personally after the session. Um, so Philip Burgess is saying he loves the worktop products. What products do you have for exterior softwood for cladding and sheds, for example? Yeah, um, yeah. most of our options will go on cladding and, and sheds. Um, depends whether you want an opaque system or a transparent system. Um, if you want something transparent, we've obviously got the widely used UV protection oil, which, as I, as I said in my video, I'm, I'm sure most of you are very, very familiar with. Um, there are tinted options in that if you want a bit of colour. Um, we also have our natural oil wood stain. Um, the, these are wood stains, so they, they are all colours. Um, all two coat systems, um, all, all highly transparent as well. So uh, what we're trying to achieve with that is giving you a, a tinted timber finish, effectively. Um, and the last product in my video was our country color. So if you want something more solid or, or um, uh, something that's going to mask the surface a little bit more intensively, um, you've, we've got an opaque system as well. What I like about our opaque system um, is I refer to it as a true opaque. Uh, it, it allows the timber surface to remain. So because you're getting that penetration, as I alluded to, you're not getting a surface coating. You are having a finish which leaves the timber surface um, visible. So, it, like I say, it's a true opaque. Um, uh, yeah, th there's many options, there's many options. If, if there's anything you want to trial, then, you know, um, I'm sure we can sort you up some samples. Um, yeah, there's options. <laughs> Okay, Michael, um, Brian obviously wants to get in touch with you about his question after the session. He said, do you want his email address or his phone number or do you want both? Um, yeah, if I could get both, that'd be great. I'll, I'll probably will give him a call, but the email address will be helpful if there's anything I'll need to just just um, clarify with him. Okay, perfect, Brian. If you uh, drop it in the comments um, and Michael will get back to you. Um, so Mark McCauley's saying, for cladding, how long should this be left placed prior to application? And what is the lowest application temperature you can safely apply? 
Uh, great questions, questions actually. Um, yeah, so firstly, the temperature side of things. Um, 10 degrees, realistically, um, anything below than 10 is going to cause you um, drying problems. Um, much like many other um, external uh, uh, products on the market itself. So um, obviously, even if you're getting close to 10 degrees, um, you've got to be conscious of those temperatures uh, because although, let's say, you get to 12 degrees, 13 degrees around lunchtime, 2 o'clock, um, the temperatures are going to quickly start decreasing um, and, and they you, you still might have a, a chance of it slowing down the actual drying time. So. Um, when it comes to temperatures, before application, second application, always check your previous application because it isn't dry. You, you need to wait for it to, to be th thoroughly dry before um, moving forward with the second coat. Um, as far as weathering goes, it, it's quite timber dependent. Um, so, for for example, with if you're using, I think that this, let's use the example of the two timbers that I mentioned in the video, cedar and larch. Um, we tend to give you guidance for cedar of around six weeks seasoning before application. Um, and with larch, I think it might be more. I think it's 12 weeks um, before, before you apply the product. And this is purely on the basis that these, these timbers are either uh, resinous or oily. So what we're looking for is for those timbers to exude the, the oils or, or resins um, from the surface, allowing you to then apply our product. Um, the reason for this is because if these if these are still leaching out before application, you may, may find that they'll hinder um, and slow down uh, or speed up, I should say, to speed up any degradation because the product hasn't been able to penetrate because those, those, those resins or oils are actually creating a blockage on the timber surface. Um, so it is important, actually, to understand what timber you've got and the need to be able to season it prior to this. Actually, if you go onto our website um, you, and, and you put in, there's, there's a, let me think about this, there is a way, um, there's a, there, there is something on our website, there's a, there's a drop down box where you can enter in your, your, what your plan is. So whether it be um, interior, exterior, it asks you about your timber type, it asks you about what finish you're after, it asks you all these questions and it will give you an end result and part of the end result if the timber needs to be seasoned it will highlight that to you um i will mm -hmm. try and remember what where this is on our on our website so that i can give you better guidance but um it's a really good system actually it's really something that actually i, I think should be used more um and and save save any, any individual um, the chance of applying a product before it's it's it should be Uh, um, Gabby's just saying if you drop down onto help and advice and click ah. Osmo recommends and then you, if you put in the type of pro type of um, timber it is mark then it should give you the exact details for your application um, <laughs> Thanks, so, <Gabby. laughs> so I've got um, another question here from Guy who's asking what is the recommended process to achieve a proper gloss finish with polyox polyx gloss Polyx, proper sorry, polyx gloss, gloss finish. A proper gloss finish. Well, other than using our our polyx gloss. Um, no, that's what he's okay. wanting to use the polyx gloss. But he's asking if you can give him the recommended process so that he gets the proper gloss finish. Okay. Um, well, obviously the product itself is a gloss gloss uh, finish. So um, if you follow the guidelines of of making sure your preparation is done correctly, and um, was this on a staircase? Did he say? Um, no, he's just asked what the recommended process is okay. to get. Yeah, so um, make making sure your timber is prepared to no higher grade than the P120. So make sure it's sanded correctly and and uh, uh, uniformly as well. Um, and just follow the two coat application process. Now I don't, you know, the, I am familiar with um, uh, a friend of mine who is a decorator um, who has achieved. A really high gloss finish um, through many applications by rag but obviously it's quite a process um, and obviously the time that you need to spend on, on achieving that but um, our recommendations Osmo recommendations would just be to apply the two coats as described um, in our literature um, and that should give you the gloss ultimately um, I'd be interested to know if he's experienced that and, and he's had an issue hence the question okay 
Um, ha have you had any issues with it, Guy, or is it something you're looking at using um, in the near future? If you could pop the details in, maybe we could come back to you, or if you want to come mm. up on the screen and talk to Michael, then um, we can have a chat here live. Um, so, Michael, what's the best process for using Osmo on floors? Best process, so the best application process. Um, yeah. Well, obviously, there are many options as far as, you know, my video um, just explained that, you know, we've we've got rollers, we've got brushes, we've got the hand pad applicator, there, there are other options as well. Um, I think there's no, there's no, realistically, there's no best option. Um, I think it's really important that as an individual, you use, you use what is, is the best process for yourself. For me, I feel very, very comfortable using a roller. Um, for others, they may struggle with a roller. Um, I, th I think it's quite easy to, especially with some of our raw or, or lighter products, it's, it's easy to kind of assume that you're getting the product into timbers as you should, where actually you, you, because of the, the pigmentation that you might be over applying it. Um, so brush application is possibly the more widely used. And we have a floor brush, so we have um, uh, two, 220 so a 220 mil and we also do a 440 so quite a large floor brush for application um so if you're a professional and you want to get the job done quickly we've we've got the option for applying that but obviously we also do our flat brushes in many many sizes um yeah i, th I think um uh, brush application like i say is is possibly the more widely used especially to the diy because i think what i like about brush application is um you can i think you've got a higher level of contact um, and control when you're when you're using a brush um especially to those that perhaps aren't so familiar with the roller application um the important factor and i know i've probably screamed at it uh, through the video is less is more um so just make sure you you get the the, the the right level of product on the on the timber and as long as you're comfortable with the tool you're using you shouldn't be having problems Okay, um, just going back to Guy, he said that um, he, he should have said that he's referring to application on furniture. So is it still the same, just a two coat process and that should give him the high gloss finish? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, I think um, with, with furniture, obviously the, the, the tool that he's using will be important. Um, make sure you keep the product nice and thin. Um, a lot of people traditionally use rags for application on, onto, um, onto furniture, um, which is, is absolutely fine. Obviously, the durability needs requirements for furniture is lower. So, it, for example, obviously, he's using his hard wax oil. So um, it's a two, it would be a two-coat brush application. But if he wants to apply it by rag, um, rag ap ap application, um, he probably would be looking at anything between four to six rag applications as equivalent to one coat of our product for by brush. Um, and like I say, if you rag it on, I've seen it done that you can achieve a higher gloss finish by keeping those coats um, more sort of, yeah, so you're using more coats but applying less product ultimately. Okay, so less is more. Yeah, absolutely. So you learn. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, does Osmo have any products for kitchen worktops or chopping boards, Michael? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. So, obviously, we have our worktop oil, um, which we have previously spoken about. And I think what's really important about a worktop oil is it is food certified. So, it is safe to come in contact once dry um, with, with food. Um, uh, so, the food, the top oil, is available in seven options. We have our clear, satin, and matte. Um, we also have, I think, I think it's seven colours. Let me run through these. So we have the acacia, terra, which are two browns. We have a white, a natural, and a graphite. So five options, seven in total. Sorry, with the two clears. Um, I think uh, what something I should have mentioned earlier. Actually, what I like about our products, and, and these are advantage. This is an advantage as well. Um, to the more traditional products um, that you may be used to is you can spot repair our products. So if you've got an area such as uh, you know, around a sink, you can mask off to the timber um, and sand that back and, and retreat the timber in that area. And it's the same with a floor. If you've got a floorboard perhaps around a threshold, 
that is getting a little bit more wear than the rest of the floor. You, you should be able to mask that off, take that back, refinish to 120, and then, then put your two coats on, allowing it to blend back in. Um, with traditional finishes, you, from my understanding with traditional finishes, it's not as easy to achieve that. So, um, so yeah, going back to the worktop, sorry. Um, if you've got, the other thing I'd like to touch on is if you've got softwood worktops, so pine or spruce or something along those sort of lines, I would recommend that you use our 4006 base coat as well. Um, the 4006 offers much more in the, in the way of water repellent qualities. Um, I mean, our, our two coat system is is adequate, um, but with softwood you get, you're gonna get more uptake of our product. So we, the 4006 is gonna penetrate um, the, the timber deeper. Um, and another thing with the 4006 is it prevents, sorry, it doesn't prevent it, it, it reduces blue stain um, from reaching the surface. And that is a, a fungal growth that can be really, really common in softwoods. So you're getting sort of a, a two um, a two key system out of that, in that you're getting more water repellent qualities and you're going to also reduce the possibility of getting blue stain from appearing on the surface. Um, we don't recommend the use of the 4006 on surfaces such as like, I don't know, let's say walnut, um, which I know are being used. Because the timber is quite dense, you're not going to get the product uptake. So um, it would just be two coats of the top oil for that purpose. Okay. And what about maintaining timber's natural colour? Do you have products for that? Yeah, we do. Um, so so that we, we actually have, I think there's, let me think about this, I think there's four colours, four options. So we've got three internal and one external. So, sorry, yeah, I just um, have to think about this. So um, what, what, what I'd like to sort of point out is I'll finish, I think when it comes to finishing timber, it's quite subjective. Your idea of keeping the, the, the timber natural um, is something we come across quite often, which is why we've produced these products. So um, some people think a clear is going to give you that that that, that natural finish. And, and for some, that is exactly what they're after. Um, what we believe is um, we, we with a natural, the idea of natural is, is to uh, keep the timber in its natural um, state um, rather than enhancing the color, which is what you get from a clear product. Um, so we have in our Pollux range, which is a hard wax oil for flooring, um, we have our 3044 rule. Um, so this has a really small amount of white pigment. And what that white pigment is doing is, if you're used to the change that you get from a clear finish, um, the white pigment is just masking that deepening of the natural color. Um, and, and that is that's that's through these 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 products that I'm going to mention now. So we have three zero four four raw, which is our Pollux product, our hard wax oil. Um, arguably, even though it's a flooring product, you can use it on any tim interior timber surface um, apart from veneers. Um, so if you want to keep that natural finish, you know it's a very easy go to product. Um, if you do have veneers um we have our door oil raw 3044 very very similar um in finish it's it's uh it is a, a different product um so what we what we've got with that is a product that isn't going to penetrate the timber as, as deeply um avoiding the contact with the uh adhesive which is where a lot of delamination qualities come from um with veneers um so we've got 3044 for doors um we also have a natural in our top oil range so if you want it for worktops and you want the food certification we've got a product there um i think top of my head i think that product is called 3068 natural for those of you who are, who are interested in that and then finally we have something for external as well which is called 429 natural um so that's from the uv protection range um so again what we're trying to offer is something for all purposes for, for for timber applications what i will highlight however is um because of the white pigment we don't recommend that these are applied to should we call them tropical timbers i.e walnut um they tend to be a bit, bit a bit darker in in natural appearance so if you actually are going to use a natural product 
from our, from Osmo, these are containing white pigment. So if you're using it on dark timbers, you, you end up trying to get a milky surface or not trying to, you will get a milky surface because that white pigment is not going to be able to neutralize the timber in the same way as what it would on a, let's say a spruce or an oak. Um, you know, so that that's something that is really, really important actually. Okay. And what about for exteriors? Do you have any exterior products, Michael? Can you tell us about yeah, so those? The, yeah, so that, that was, uh, so do you want, are you asking me about, is this a different question? Are you asking me about? Yeah, general um, exterior, in general, yeah. general exterior products. Yeah, this this is quite an open question, so uh, have we got time? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, um, yeah, so we, we've obviously got the UV protection oil, which you've all, uh, as I say, I think is, is our, uh, most people are very familiar with this. Um, it comes in a choice of, two clear options, one with a biocide and one without a biocide for those of you perhaps with a more um, eco conscience. Um, we also have the product in a spruce, a larch and a cedar, which you saw in the video. There's also an oak, um, a Douglas fir and um, the natural, if I didn't already mention that. Um, so these, these, these are products that are ideal for external vertical applications. Um, then moving on, we've got our natural oil wood stain range. This is a product that my colleagues know I quite like quite a lot because um, for me, it's it's a great alternative to what is regarded as traditional exterior finishes. Um, bearing in mind that we've already talked about two coat applications, um, the natural oil wood stain um, has a coverage rate of 26 meters square per litre. Um, it's highly transparent even after your two coats doesn't create a surface coating like traditional products, which I think is exceptionally important when it comes to external purposes. Um, and with this, you have a reduced maintenance need. Um, so, and I say that because if timed correctly, um, so with, with, with traditional finishes that we've already touched on, you will get a cracking or peeling around the, the window sills, for example. You, you shouldn't be experiencing that with Osmo. Um, so at, at, at certain times when you see the timber, should we say drying out? Um, so remember, this, these are oils. Um, so as you start seeing sort of drying out or the timber surface becoming slightly dull, all you should need to do is clean the surface down and reapply one application um, as opposed to a traditional surface Product where you might be sanding that off and then applying your two potentially three um, uh, products um, applications so um, yeah that's available in 18 colors 18 these are natural wood colors and sort of likes of grays and, and whites and I've, we actually do that in, in this product range we have exterior metallics um, yeah. which are I don't think anybody else offers um, and you have to sort of see them to believe them. Um, they are quite special. Um, the other thing I, I didn't mention as well about this product, and another, another thing which I think makes it a good product for uh, to, to run against the alternatives is in, in sort of spring, summer time when the temperatures were much higher, um, you've got the potential for this product to dry in four to six hours, which means you could, as a tradesman, get your coats, your two coat application um, applied and finished in one day. And, uh, you know, I don't think you can argue with the product when, when you've got that as an option as a tradesman. Um, so that's 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 another product that, I mean, another thing actually about the natural oil wood stain is you can apply that to all exterior tim surfaces, and that's including decks. Um, so as a two-coach system, this can work on anything externally. Um, it's exceptionally thin, and, and I don't think really we showed to you that in the video, but it is really, really thin. It's quite a watery uh, product. Having said that, we do have a decking oil, um, uh, obviously for decks. Um, two coat system, I think it's seven colours in total that we have in that, in, plus an anti-slip. Um, so if you want an anti-slip coating, we can offer that to you. Um, the anti-slip is a top coat, um, so it should be applied over one of the coloured base coats. And I say coloured because we do have a clear teak option in in the decking oil range um uh, leading on from this we have our country color which again i've talked about already it, it's the two um boards that i i coated fi uh, finally in in the video there um 
my colleagues actually the, the, this product is my colleague are my colleagues favorites um because it is being being opaque is possibly one of the more durable options um as far as uh, osmo products uh, go um and it really is quite beautiful once it's applied to the timber because it does leave um the timber surface uh, uh as as it was just with a solid color um being applied to it again this is a 26 meter square per liter application so um i don't know of an alternative opaque that has that coverage i might be wrong um but i think that 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 is something that is is really really strong with our product itself um we also have a exterior base coat as well um it's an optional extra um if i'm being honest it, it it allows you to um much like the interior product which i said for worktops you, you you get much more in the way of water repellent qualities it also has the op uh, the possibility of reducing blue stain from appearing on the surface so for softwoods i would argue that actually it's a necessity um with that with softwoods but it is an optional extra for those of you that don't want to use it um and and take the risk of of, of what can what can appear with the blue stain um so yeah so just to go back over that so we've got the uv protection oil um the decking oil product range natural oil wood stain country color and the wr base coat quite a lot then I told you there was a, yeah, there's a lot, to, lot to talk about there. Um, I've got a question from Powell and he's asking, is the exterior oil suitable for cedar cladding and is it available in Ireland? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I believe it is available in Ireland. Um, my colleague Finton I've seen is on here, who is our sales manager in Ireland. So he will possibly pop up and confirm that. But absolutely, with, with cedar, um, I would, yeah, you've got the options of colours and the clears which I, I did cover in the, in the video there itself. Um, it's important to allow cedar to, to weather. Um, I think we, we give a guidance, which I've already touched on, of around six weeks um, for those oils to exude the timber. Um, yeah, it's a good option. It's a good option. Um, I'm just waiting for Finton to come back and tell us whether he... he um, it, is, it is available. I know it's available in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> Drop me a call. There's his number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have actually used your um, wood oil on um, timber. Um, it's my it's my office outside, and it's completely made of cedar, and it looks amazing. So I used it in the cedar Good. color. So I know Fantastic I knew the answer to that one. <laughs> there you go. You should have stepped in. <laughs> <laughs> um, so where can people purchase us more products? Yeah, so we, we've got many retailers across the UK and Ireland. Um, I, I, do you know what I'd say to you? Actually, go to our website is the easiest option because if you go to our website, which is www.osmouk.com, um, there is a where to buy option um, and you can search it by location or postcode and it, it will produce you a map um, and a list underneath this, which will... Um, start with your closest retailer first so you've got many many options and we do actually um list our retailers by uh i think it's bronze silver and gold and perhaps even platinum now i'm not sure um but so the higher or the 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 higher the reference in in you know gold or, or platinum um will suggest that they've got more stock but I would say to you always call because a lot of our products are considered core now for many many of our stockists so um always call your local stockist first because you know chances are they will have have what you're after and i can see gabby's just put a link in the comments as well <laughs> um for where you can buy so if you want to click on there and um, find out where you can buy closest to you there's the link um and what <laughs> <laughs> what about if somebody wanted to become an osmo dealer what if we've got people listening what's the process michael yeah again actually i i direct them to our website um there's on our home page if you scroll down to i've got to think about this we've got a new website now um if, I, I believe if you scroll down to the bottom of the home page um there is a box at the bottom called Let's Talk Business. Um, so I think if you click that box, it then gives you another screen which says um, become an Osmo stockist. Um, 
which will then give you a, a very short, brief form. And I think all we want from you is your name, location, your address, and contact details. Um, and if you're in my area, you'll get me, and I'll get in touch with you. If you're in Ireland, you'll get Finton. Um, ultimately, th there's a representative that will touch base with you. Okay, perfect. And what about tools and accessories? Do you actually have any tools or accessories that you sell um, for Osmo products that you recommend? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, again, we've got quite a few, and I've, I've already talked about some of them. Um, so floor brushes. Um, I think the important part of our floor brush system is actually the pole that it connects to. So we're using um, the same handles for a lot of our applicators. Um, so for, for a DIYer, for example, who's doing it in their own home, you've got the, the, the option to buy the pole and the brush, complete the job, and then the pole can be used for the cleaning mops that we also offer. Um, uh, we also do, obviously, the hand brushes, which are used in the video. Um, we also have the roller system. So we do nine inch floor rollers, um, as well as the uh, four inch mohair small rollers as well, which are used in the video, as well as all the um, trays and removable tray inserts and, and all this, which are, are designed to, to obviously um, for best application for Osmo products. Um, our flat brushes, for example, which are our kind of our small handheld brushes that are used. Um, they are designed that they are synthetic brush, um, designed to help the fluidity of, of Osmo. So, you know, yeah, I'm going to champion them, obviously. Um, I believe there are some alternatives on the market that have the filaments designed in the same fashion. Um, but, you know, yes, we, we have our own ones. I'm just trying to think of, uh, obviously, the hand pad system. I'm excited, as I said in the video, I'm excited about that. We also do an option for that to fit on the, the uh, telescopic pole. So if you want to do a floor and you can um, work it into a floor i've used this myself actually um uh, done a floor locally to me um with the hand with the pole system um and yeah it, it takes a little bit of elbow grease but you you again you can use the finishes um perhaps uh that are more designed for more of a professional application with this um uh so yeah you've got an option with that um I'm trying to think what else there is uh we, we obviously we do a machine as well so um for the, the professionals in you out there that are perhaps watching we have a, an application machine which has uh is it circular disc pads that we that we also sell for different applications you can also use this machine to maintain um so if you've got for a homeowner um should we argue that if you're using a dyson to clean your solid floors throughout your home regularly you could opt for an Osmo machine um, for this purpose with all the correct cleaners and um, applicators for that. And it will be much, it will give your floor, it will constantly rejuvenate it and, and, and give you the, the impression that the floor is, is going to last and look more lustrous for much longer. Um, okay. I think that's, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to rack my brain, um, but yeah, I think <laughs> I've covered the majority of them. Um, okay. Obviously, our website, if you go to our website, we've got everything on there ah decking products yeah we also have a decking applicator which also um fits uh the telescopic pole um but as you saw in the video i used the roller which will also fit the telescopic pole um but yeah check out our website that's that's probably the if you if you if you're looking for something specific go to our website and they'll definitely show you where it what, what what's on offer offer Fantastic. And Gabby's just put that link up in the chat there to the Osmo website. If you're looking at any of the Osmo products or application products, you'll be able to find them there on the website. Um, what a team. I'm glad they're with me. <laughs> Help me out of my holes. <laughs> Powell's saying the floor decking brushes are absolutely fantastic. He says it's a quick application and saves loads of time. And is there some kind of replacement handle for them as mine is popping out constantly? Uh, so the actual the connection's broken. I don't know if we sell those separately. Um, I'd have to look into that. So if we can get your your details, I'll I'll find out for you. Um, yeah. Um, again, you might if you if you get in touch with one of our um, retailers, you may find that they are selling them and breaking them down and selling them individually. If not, so um, if we can get his details, I'll I'll come back to him on that. 
Okay, Paul, if you want to um, put your email address or, and telephone number in the chat, and then Michael can give you a call after the um, session. And um, Michael, do you have a platform where people can see before and after examples of Osmo so that they can see what um, the finish they're expected to achieve with the, with the products? Yeah, um, again, I think I alluded to some of these platforms uh, at the end of my video. So Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, um, obviously th these are these are public pa platforms. So the idea of this is that we've got many of our end users and, and people that are new to Os Osmo products um, uploading their their, their, um, their their before and after pictures. Um, it's it's a great it, it, yeah, uh, it's a, it's a great platform for people to kind of um, demonstrate how they can use our product, and also um, I think we we do get people on there as well, sort of offering advice and and sharing their knowledge, which can also be useful. Um, having said that, if you're unsure, get in touch with Osmo. And is that where people are sharing? Is that your own group or is it just your general um, Facebook pages and things? Do you have your own group? Yeah, we do have our own group, actually. Um, I'm glad you asked about that. So we have a product, we have a page on, on Facebook called Osmo Community. Um, so myself and my colleagues are on there um, uh, as well as a technical team um, to answer your questions um, as well as uh, actually we've got many, many end users that uh quite often beat us to answering the questions as well so it's, it's a really useful platform because um you, there's a there's a there's a fountain of knowledge on our community page there you go there you go Gabby there's just, all the links to those well, for you. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the facebook link the instagram and also the facebook group link um so yeah if you do think of any questions and think oh i wish i'd have asked michael that um jump on the facebook group and put your question in there and you'll be able to get an answer from one of the team or somebody in the group so thanks everybody for joining us for the session i think we've come to the end of our questions today um thanks michael thank you very much um, what, no problem what we're going to do now is launch our competition so in a minute you'll see a green button will come up at the bottom of the screen um, so that you can enter the competition and the competition prize is a Bosch power box 18 volt water resistant cordless Bluetooth job site radio um, and Osmo have generously put this product um, prize forward so if you click on that um, enter competition put your details in there and you'll be able to enter our competition and um, we'll be announcing the winners at the end of the trade decorator festival at the beginning of march so thank you everyone for joining us and if you do want to join any more of our sessions we're going to be live again at one o'clock um, if you've not already registered for that session you can jump onto our website trade-decorator.co.uk hit the Trade Decorator Festival bar and you'll see what we've got lined up for the rest of the day. Thank you, everyone. And thank you again, Michael. Thank you. Goodbye.